what is up everybody and welcome to my channel today we're talking about being six months on t i'm zion pronoun t and him and today i'm going to be sharing six things that i've learned over the six months that i've been on t the things that i've learned can be uh very helpful to other ftms and other trans people trans masculine people and it really can apply to anybody because it just really applies to life I think a lot of the times um, people get caught up in what transness is and what it looks like, but in reality, like it's really just finding yourself, <laughs> which is like really a very human experience. It just looks a lot different to us uh, because we have to go through different procedures and not procedures like medically, but like procedures and like things that help us find ourselves, whether that's being alone, you know, understand like meditating, uh, you know, just doing things that make you feel whole introspection pretty much but that's just like a very human thing that we all should do first of all let's get into what it's like being six months on t so i didn't really write on any notes on like uh about like how i feel or anything like that a half a year and you know that feels amazing to just say things that have changed noticeably i'm gaining facial hair and stuff like that i've been starting a new beard routine where um i just you know it's a part of my skincare routine i incorporate my skincare routine with my uh beard routine so that you know i'm making sure that i'm taking care of my skin but also like my beard routine it requires me to clean my face so i'm like forget it that's a part of my routine uh we'll just put it all in one so yeah that's one thing facial hair is coming in it's you know taking its time and i'm really not pressed about it uh my voice obviously if you could tell from this video um to the first you know three month video my voice has dropped but i'm really just hoping that i could just um get it today we are 62 days on t today i'm taking my 60 well it's 62 days i think this is my 10th shot though i am 98 days on t this is my voice six months on t socially i've been passing more um people have been addressing me with my uh, preferred pronouns he and him uh, which has been nice and i've been socially uh transitioning as well like i've been yeah just been passing more it's been a bit of a culture shock i'd say because you know being treated like my actual gender is very um, it's different because I haven't been, you know, portrayed as male my whole life. So now I am going through life as a man and it's interesting because male privilege is, is so real and it's so interesting to see it like in front of my eyes, but that's just a whole nother topic. Sex drive through the roof. I feel like a, a high school boy, honestly. And that's technically what I am because I am still, I'm going through this is my second puberty but it's so annoying because I'm 23 so it's just like um that's another thing looking younger than I actually am uh but I already know like at some point I'm gonna look my age but it's just gonna take time like I'm literally going through puberty again um but the puberty I should have had <laughs> but yeah so that's that's that body hair I've got more of that like my legs uh way more hairy my arms my arms have always been kind of hairy like they kind of look they look the same to me, to be honest. Like, and as you can see now, like it doesn't look like I have a lot, unless it looks like a lot to you. A lot is a, an opinion, so you might think I have a lot of hair. Another thing that I've noticed is my hair texture has changed. Like now, you can see it, looks all soft and stuff, but that's because I've been taking care of it and I just like, uh, just did a little something to it, added some products to it and water just for the video. But like my hair texture is so, it's not so different, but it's very different. Like it doesn't hold moisture and oil as, as much as it used to pretty much. Like, so like I'll, I could do like pretty, I could do like a treatment to my hair. Like, uh, just like, you know, do the same routine I do, like add curl definer, add water, um, and oil and stuff like that to my hair and it could last like the whole day or half the day or something but like with what now like my hair just my hair texture has changed and yeah I don't know if it's because of yeah no I think it's because of the sea because a lot of guys has, have said that their hair texture has changed and I definitely feel it because when my hair is dry which it gets dry a lot easier and a lot faster um but when it is dry it just feels a lot more like like 
like that shit is gonna fucking break off in my hand and <laughs> that's, that's really the only way I can describe it and like I don't I don't know if it's because I went blonde like I've been blonde before I've been blonde pre t and I've never had this experience uh with my hair being so dry so soon like and I'll even wake up in the middle of the night and be like damn my hair is dry and also forget like I have to try to remember to put my do-rag on when I go to sleep because like my hair doesn't retain moisture so I need to make sure that I'm constantly taking care of it skin too so this is something that I'm not sure like you can see my skin is pretty clear only thing I have is like acne up here but it comes and goes and it you could barely see it unless you're like really up close on my face and I feel like it gets drier faster like I don't know if it's because it's cold it's winter time um I know black people in the winter time we need to keep that moisturization that lotion that shea butter right next to our side because it's when it gets cold we get dry I don't know like it feels like it might be because of the tea because I've never felt this level of dryness during the winter or anything like that. Like my hands will be super dry, my uh, feet, oh my God, like I have to make sure, like I can't even, like I can't even go to bed without like putting lotion on my feet because like the shit is just, it be dry for no reason. Like my hands, my, my feet be just dry for no reason. So I'm just like, and I've never felt my feet be so dry. Like it, it's so dry to the point where I literally have to, uh, I get, I'm uncomfortable. So like I have to put lotion on my feet or, or unless I'm wearing socks and I can't really like feel it. But if I, I just got my feet out, like I'm just like, what the hell? Like this shit is rough as hell. I started working out again. Um, I started some home workouts cause I was working out with a personal trainer, but I'm not gonna do like, I'm not gonna work with my personal trainer till after i'm approved for uh exercise after my top surgery so also if you want to like hear my thoughts about top surgery i have like a 30 minute podcast uh you can check it out this is the cover for it but it's called becoming zion and i think it's like the fifth fifth episode of becoming zion or fourth episode one of the two and uh i just talk about all my feelings uh about the surgery coming up yeah 20 days left till my top surgery if you all want to donate and uh help support i do have a gofundme you can check it out i actually do need help to just cover recovery and all that kind of stuff but all the information is on my gofundme page you can check it out it's in the description it's in the bio of my instagram it's on all of my social media so you will not miss it and if you do miss it you can't find Find the link just dm me and i'll send it right to you all right so let's get into the content of the video i just wanted to update you all on just the physical and mental changes that have been going on with um me because it's six months on t i'm halfway to that one year mark and like one year is just you know i'm not even look patience patience i'm not even looking i'm looking forward to it but i'm very much happy with the fact that I'm here, you know what I mean? Let's get into the six things that I've learned in the six months I've been on T. All right, so the first thing that I learned. All right, so the first thing that I learned is that discomfort makes me, okay, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm reading. First thing that I learned is discomfort makes me understand that the path I'm on is right for me. Sometimes my dysphoria gaslights me into thinking that I'm not on the right path, Sometimes you have to experience discomfort to understand the comfort you strive for is valid. Now what I mean by this is like, I'll give you an example. The other day, I got misgendered, um, and it's been a while since I've been misgendered. It's been a while since I had that feeling of being misgendered and all the anger and upset and just discomfort that comes with it. But the thing about it is, being in those uncomfortable situations really validates like, I'm on the right path. Like, being called she, being called a woman, and being perceived as a woman is not something that I enjoy and it makes me feel validated towards my journey because I know like this is the path that I'm meant for this this makes me feel good like this makes me know in my head like th this is who I am like I am a man and people invalidating my identity just makes me understand that where I'm going is the right direction the second one is patience is key for each one of these I wrote like a paragraph almost uh, but honestly a lot of these explain themselves and I'm gonna just talk from my perspective about what I learned from this. So patience is definitely key. I mean, I feel like every video that, you know, a person is talking about their transition and stuff like that and like kind of almost giving tips, um, it's about patience. It's all about patience. It's all about the journey. Like being trans is not about going from one thing to another. It's literally about that journey in between of finding yourself because it's not about I'm not this and I need to be this. It's I'm this, now let me bring my inside to the outside. And that is not something that's gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen, something that's gonna happen in one year. You know, it's gonna take time. And if you are dedicated to yourself in, in your journey, then, you know, 
you should allow yourself patience and grace throughout it because it's gonna take the time that it takes and you just don't know how much time that's gonna be. All right, so I'm gonna read this next one because I think I made some really good points in the paragraph that I wrote. Gender is about what's on the inside. Medical and social transition is just a way to feel the way you do on the inside, on the outside. So when people misgender you, it's best not to look it's best not to take it personal because they don't know you and everything people do is because of themselves and not because of you humans are naturally biased gender is all about your mind um that's what i'm saying like a lot of us understand who we are in our mind and and want to automatically have that projected to the physical form but you know it take like i said it's going to take the time that it takes so understand that when people misgender you it has nothing to do with you um you might you know go to the beyond to try to pass as who, whatever you are presenting as but at the end of the day people are automatically going to be biased no matter what people are obsessed with their own opinions and that's just how it is that's just how, how the world is that we live in um, people have their own ideas of gender and you know even cis people get misgendered but it's just like it's not about the outside it's about the inside and people can't see inside your mind and people can't get to know you within the two seconds that they meet you so i would just say offer yourself grace and understand that you know if someone misgenders you don't look in don't look at yourself physically and go what am i doing wrong because you're doing nothing wrong all right the fourth thing that i learned i create my own idea of what a man is society tries to put a box on everything especially when it comes to masculinity and manhood they try to you know gatekeep and make it seem like you have to do these certain amount of things to be a man but it's just like when it comes down to manhood the biggest part of being an, a man is being an individual being someone who makes your own standards your own rules and you stand in that all right so this next one is kind of similar to the other one about gender being in your mind um when it comes down to like your being and who you really are as an individual and your identity it, it has nothing to do with your physical a lot of people get caught up in the physical and you know the body and stuff like that and look i'm not gonna take away because dysphoria is a real thing how you feel your feelings are valid no matter what you know what i'm saying but at the end of the day your identity is all about your mind and your spirit because when it comes down to it like you have to really value your your traits that don't change your physical body ages and changes but your spirit and your soul does not you know you have to really consider these you know really value the traits that are not physical for example for myself i'm creative i'm driven i'm ambitious mind you none of those things have anything to do with my physical state um, because who you really are has nothing to do with the physical plane i believe that we are multi-dimensional beings this is only one plane of existence the physical plane but our mind can take us to different places while still being here. Okay, so this last one, I am gonna read it because it's a very long paragraph that I wrote, but it had, I'm gonna explain it after, but I'm gonna read it first. Do what's best for you. Don't compare your journeys to others and let others discourage you from doing what might work for you and not for them. I've seen a lot of behavior in the trans community surrounding different methods that are used to alleviate dysphoria. And I've seen trans guys bashing certain methods and putting others on pedestals but in reality, what works for one person might not work for another. Like I said, we are all individuals and this is our path, so we get to choose how we walk it. And on this, like I've seen on social media, like trans guys bashing other trans guys because they, you know, might use certain equipment that they don't, or they might have certain procedures and surgeries that they won't have, or they don't, they don't think is necessary. Um, we all walk our own paths. Not all trans people have dysphoria and we're all individuals. So what works for me might not work for you, but there's no reason for you to put it down and make it seem like it's not really a valuable option because that option that you are thinking or you are saying is trash might be an affordable option that makes someone feel good, you know, or it might be just an a option that might be more expensive, but this makes this person want to live. So it's like there's no reason you should be putting it down and talking trash about it. Sometimes there's this elitism, this internal transphobia that people project onto other people it's just like just because something doesn't fit for you does not mean that it just is useless that's pretty much all i have for you today um this is like a 25 minute video i'm gonna edit it down of course but um it's a little bit of a longer uh tea update video but i really hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something i hope you took something away from it because that's really what i'm here for is to educate 
um, and to inspire, you know, and hope that, you know, you can really take some of the things that I say into your real life and apply them and it helps, you know, so. Also, um, be sure to check out my GoFundMe in the description if you want to help me out. If you want to learn more about my GoFundMe, watch my last video um, and just listen to me talk about what it's for, uh, you know, why I'm getting the surgery. You can also go to my GoFundMe and I've written um, a few blurbs about um, just, just what my GoFundMe is about, what it's for, um, and how you can help. And I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next video.